Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, April 12th, Tingsboro School Committee meeting. My name is Rebecca Stanton. I'd like to remind you that these meetings are audio and video recorded. And we'll start with introductions to my left. Grace Chambly, student representative. Dustine Puma. Mark Branco, assistant superintendent. Hi, my name is superintendent. Good evening, Julie Guastucci. Jeff Bowe. Good evening, Ryan McMahon. Anthony Terrell. Joe Messina, school business administrator. I right, so the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time we'll go into, um, we have the fiscal 23 school budget um, public hearing. So I'll seek a motion to suspend the regular meeting and open the public hearing for the fiscal 23 budget. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 6 0 0. Uh, Mr. Uh, Messina? Madam Chair, I don't see anyone here for public comment okay. on the budget, so I think we're All right, good to excellent. go back to the regular meeting. Uh, well, I think we need to vote on it, right? Uh, we do. Okay. Um, I will seek a motion to approve the fiscal 23 budget as presented um, by Mr. Messina previously and with a total school expenditure of $25,297,618 and the school committee budget of $22,243,900. I'll make that motion. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That carries 6 0 0. And we will go back to our regular scheduled meeting. We need a motion for that, sorry. Oh, I'll seek a motion to go back to our regularly scheduled meeting. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 6 0 0. All right, so moving on to approval of minutes. I'll seek a motion to approve the March 28, 2022 Tri Board meeting minutes the March 15, 2022 Superintendent Evaluation Subcommittee meeting minutes, the March 15, 2022 School Committee meeting minutes, and the March 15 Executive Session meeting minutes, Executive Session mi minutes not to be released at this time. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 6 0 0. Citizen time. We do not have any citizens here. I will seek a motion to take item 10A out of order. I'll make that motion. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That carries 6 0 0. Mr. Pollitt. Hi, everybody. Good evening. So I'm Chris Pollitt, principal of the middle school, just for, for the record. <laughs> and I come to you tonight to discuss a little bit about what we're hoping to do in the near future with sixth graders in particular and look at our scope and sequence of, of a, a lot of the skills that you don't necessarily see in the standards that we teach content wise in school. So for a long time in our sixth grade we had students who would go to a th two night, three day overnight camp, Camp Borndale. We haven't done that for the last couple of years and obviously for very obvious reasons. And we've done some serious analysis kind of, of what we're trying to get out of this programming in sixth grade and what's the best way to do it. So we obviously have observed, and you've probably talked about it in your meetings several times, that the needs of our students have changed a great deal over the last couple of years, that they're in a, in a very different place. Um, we're not, I'm not using the word normal, that we're going back to normal. I'm using the word more typical experience. And we found this year has been a challenge to get students back to a more typical experience in their uh, interactions with each other, their interactions with adults, and just overall the, you know, the trajectory that we're trying to get as far as how they just work through their school year. So <clears throat> what we have specifically observed with kids is their inability to take leadership roles and to, to collaborate effectively in, in our, again, a more typical setting. And we found that what Borndale and that trip attempted to do in sixth grade was to kind of immerse kids in that experience. But the transition back to school, it was a, it was a challenging one as far as employing those skills in, in our school setting. 
And this year we had the opportunity, and I think I reported out, or maybe Grace did, about we had Nature on Wheels to our school, which was a program done by Nature's Classroom, came to our school and really embedded uh, some great leadership opportunities in their program, some collaboration, and our, our teachers were able to transition some of that back in the next couple of days programming. We also have planned in the, at the end of May a follow-up to that at Teamworks down in Acton so students will go in and practice those skills. And we have a half day the next day, which is right before Memorial Day weekend, where the teachers will continue that programming and they'll hopefully expand that out. And looking at our, uh, just looking at our programming in general, we felt like we would get more, uh, more opportunities for kids through the school year rather than bunching it all together and putting it in a place where we're not able to really transition that through the rest of the school year. So we've talked with Nature's Classroom, who has a site in Groton, and uh, we are going to talk with them about a fall visit to them and then consider an overnight possibility in the spring or just another day program in the spring rather than bunching it all together. And as you saw in the, in the slide that we produced, we, we've looked at programming as a whole, that these programs have very much increased in price, that the transportation availability and cost has been a real challenge for us. Looking at that field trip in May to Acton, it basically our transportation costs doubled the cost to the, to the students. And although we have some funding that we can employ to it, the costs for all of our trips that we're in t uh, attempting to do this spring have been have been greatly increased. Uh, each of these programs, and talking with their directors, has had tremendous turnover in their staff, and some of them struggle to get staff that are going to do these longer programs that we've looked into. Um, and that some of the programs we talked with are not making adaptations to their program to meet the needs that we're talking about, less leadership opportunities, less of those uh, activities that we think we can hopefully transfer back into the school. Um, so we, we, I talked a great deal with Nature's Classroom about what their programs look like for day programs, what their uh, overnight programs. They have five different sites, Groton being the closest. So one of the factors for Groton, it has, has adventure programming, has leadership programming, and is obviously close enough that it would help us defray some transportation costs initially. Another piece to our, our challenge is that many of the originators for Nature's Cloud, I mean, excuse me, for uh, Borndale are no longer working in the school district, that they were the they had been the champions of this program, had been able to negotiate with, um, with the camp and do some things that we probably aren't able to do anymore. Um, I also have a number of staff members that have young children. So two and three day overnights or two or three day programs is challenging for them to do with their family situations. And in order to really cross that, bring those skills back, you really want those core teachers to be the ones involved in it. So we were talking earlier about our Washington DC trip, which is in, in progress right now. We have an, a combination of teachers who are core teachers and who are unified arts teachers that are down there. I would envision this would be the same type of model if we were to continue, have a larger program at sixth grade. And I think effectively in that transitional year, that core group of teachers is a very important link for kids and that they need to be available to do that and that would be a challenge for us. So I'm not ruling out the overnight opportunity. I'll work with Nature's Classroom, especially the local uh, opportunity until we get some handle on cost, to be honest with you. It's hard to suggest to parents that we're looking at a $500 two night, three day <coughs> trip, you know, and then to do that again in eighth grade, which uh, has been an expensive trip for the last couple of years, last couple of times we've done it. So. We, want, we think it's an appropriate time to Im implement this, given what we're coming back from, doing some real analysis about the bang for the buck, so to speak, as far as that program, as far as how it transfers back into our school and how we implement it, and leave an opportunity with an organization that's a close, has many different options for programming and different facilities that we could look into an overnight opportunity or even expanding back to that if we feel our kids and our staff are at that place. So that's what I'm promoting. 
love to answer any questions for you uh, about it. Um, and just, you know, try to make this a more typical experience, as mm -hmm. I said, in schools to be able to carry those skills forward for kids. So. Madam Chair, if I just add one thing, I think that's one of the things that we're trying to focus on this year is instead of just rolling things out like we've always done, we all want to get back to some sort of typical environment. Um, but that being said, we also want to assess what we've done, why we've done it, and is it still effective? Is it still the bang for the buck? And the continuity of this program, be able, the opportunity to be able to revisit this at some point and revisit those skills and bring them back in um, certainly has great value for our kids to keep revisiting that and, and really uh, create that foundation for them. So. Um, all the administrators have been challenged to kind of really look at what we do and why we do it and really start to rethink what's best for our kids now as we come out of where we've been for the past three years. And is the thought to do this starting this coming fall, so fall 2022? Right. We were kind of chomping at the bit to do an opportunity like this <clears throat> this school year to get, you know, so there's, there's obviously benefit to doing these activities on campus. So the Nature on Wheels activity this fall was really successful but there's also a benefit to taking kids out of their comfort zone so that's why we looked into action works this spring and so that would be kind of a, a test drive so to speak and for me the test drive and i'll say this on the record here is how the teachers follow through the next days to see how they're implementing those mm -hmm. strategy skills tendencies activities that they're learning so that the kids are learning that we can see how that plays out in our in our classroom and making those connections for kids the problem with like so uh, any trip you do where you're gone for a long period of time you have the exhaustion factor and then they come back and we're trying to get back to and teachers feel this need quite often to get back to their content and move forward these are skills that all of our teachers six through eight have identified are things that our kids need to work on and to get back to that more typical experience of school we need to see that logical flow through the three years and we don't want to, over, you know, in the fall, by doing this all in the fall, it's hard to transfer that back. So we would see the spring doing something with this current sixth grade and then the fall doing at least that one day in the fall and then look at, and we've, we've booked another day in the spring and we'll talk about if we're ready for an overnight, we'll talk about the cost, we'll also look at the, you know, what, what the type of program would be in the spring. And then... Seventh grade, we've already talked about what types of activities are going to help carry those skills through in seventh grade. They've done things like a team-wide hike up Pack Manadnock and doing some orienteering. Uh, they've gone to Bodeborg, which is an escape room team building activity. They've done some things on campus that they want to do. And, you know, those are, that's, we got to build, as Mike, as, as Dr. Flanagan has said, we want to make sure that there's actual scope and sequence to this that kids are building upon these skills that are appropriate just like they would in science skills that they've done in sixth grade and build on those in seventh and in eighth grade that cyclical nature these are all things that we have to employ in our jobs we have to employ at high school level and college level and those are the things that we feel are really lacking because students have been out of the more typical situation in school and that's why we want to be purposeful and carry it over into the so yes, the, the long-winded answer to your question is, yes, we anticipate doing this at the end of September, and then again in April, minimally. Right. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, is one of your goals trying to keep the cost down for families? Is that one of your goals? That is definitely a consideration. So as we looked at Action Works, we looked at a whale watch to end the year for eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Currently, our bus company has is limited with its drivers and this is relatively new for us so they can only run field trips after their run for the elementary school and before our run so there's no extension to our day there's it's a four hour window mm -hmm. and to go anywhere we're not going to get anything out of a two and a half hour program so we've uh, contracted with another bus company and then a coach company to look at what the cost would be and it's it, it, inordinate amount of money that would be there. So that is definitely a consideration. Mm -hmm. When a program costs you kids $400 to go to and the mm -hmm. bus is going to cost you another $400 or another $250 in some cases, we can find other sources. Yeah. It's still not going to defray the cost to a point where we feel really it's beneficial. It's not, again, what it's going to value. Yeah. And the, the reason why I asked that question is because I know 
you know, my kids had amazing memories from these trips, and, and, and that's wonderful. However, I know there was kids that weren't able to go, and they stayed at school, and I'd love to see a trip going forward that could be inclusive of all children, because I think that's important. You know, if you're talking about leadership skills, you want them all to have the same experience, if at all possible. Absolutely, and I, there, you know, we do scholarship for kids in some cases when we can. We built fundraisers over three years for our eighth grade trip where kids could go out and do fundraisers and mm -hmm. some literally paid for their entire trip. Mm -hmm. Some paid for part of it, some didn't engage in that activity at all. We wanted them to have some ability to help themselves along the way. <coughs> it's hard to put it on whatever funds that we've raised through f photography or through whatever to cover those costs, and you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. a, a day program where everyone can participate because we can help accomplish the goal of getting every kid there, mm -hmm. that's what we want. I wouldn't come back to Dr. Flanagan and Mr. Messina and say, we need to build this into the budget. There are school districts that do that, that spend a lot of their budget toward a trip like this, but if you think about 144 kids coming into sixth grade next year, at Four, four or five hundred dollars a kid, and we put that into a school budget. That's a that's probably more than I have control of in the day-to-day -day materials that we spend. Just and so you're exactly right. We want to include all kids, and we want to make it affordable. Right, and also make it doable too, because I think you know some of the kids that maybe didn't go to Borndale were because they weren't ready for that emotionally or socially, and so you want to make it so that you know it's it's more at at everyone's level that they'll you know all be able to participate with with opportunities to push and, and, and to right. pull and do and but have that common experience that you mm, can build yep. upon so and you're a important. really yeah. important point thank you so thanks for the presentation um in my field one of the things i hate hearing is we do it because that's how we've always done it mm -hmm. and i feel that's where we're getting to with borndale mm -hmm. um I was hearing less stellar reviews each year, so I'm glad you took the opportunity to reevaluate that and find something new that made more sense. Um, can you give an example of one of the skills you're hoping to learn, what the activity would be, and how you would build that into the school day when you came back? So the, one of the concepts of programs like this is, a, is the concept of challenge by choice, where you have students who reach and you support them to get as far as they can. So in a lot of those leadership activities, you're going to see them get be challenged by an element at, at the camp, per se, that they may not be successful at. And what we need, I think, quite honestly, in schools in general, is students' ability to fail and learn from that. We talk about it all the time. They're not able to do that, right? Because if you think about your own children, they want to succeed. They want to please. They don't want to feel like they're inferior. And that taking a risk, that challenge by choice, and then maybe not reaching that goal, that's a very clear transitional skill, right? So taking the easy way out, solving problems that are right in front of you as opposed to going to that next level to challenge yourself with a more difficult reading assignment or challenge yourself in a, in a problem-solving situation, work with different students, all those things are easily transferable. And what I loved hearing about action, the Action Works trip this spring is that they were planning that half day to follow up those activities and knowing the sixth grade team they're going to go further those last three weeks which are always challenging the schools at the after memorial day so those are the types of skills you want to see actually imparted it shouldn't just exist at the camp it should be those things that they're going to put back into their every day and if there's clear language that it's consistently used about the in or on those skills, I think you'll see students making those logical connections and feeling more comfortable. That's where it's got to be systematic, too. That's where it's got to be beyond sixth grade. It's got to be into seventh and eighth grade where we're having that common language around challenging yourself. What does that mean? We can throw our, our, uh, our uh, yeah, nice, uh, perseverance, all our, our uh, the words that we, thank you. <laughs> Word, it's late. Core values. Core values, thank you. Yeah, Word sure, retrieval sure. issue here. Um, we can throw them around, but how are you actually applying them? How are you seeing them in your day-to-day? -day? So what's great about camps like a nature's classroom, and even Borndale, is you can give them what you're working on with your core values, and they're going to 
start using that language ahead of time. But that challenge by choice has been consistently done in these camps. Nature's Classroom I've been involved with or I had been involved with in two schools prior. They're, they're going to employ those types of skills that we want to see kids doing in their day to day. So. Excellent. Thank again, you. Again, long-winded answer for you. But. That was good. <laughs> um, as a parent who chaperoned two children to Camp Borndale trips, um, I enjoyed those trips. The kids had a blast. I think there was a lot of friendships made um, during those trips that may not have otherwise been made because of the way that they paired the kids up and uh, their sleeping quarters and that type of stuff. Um, I'll miss that part of it because I, I think it's a great experience for the kids, but I agree that we need to move on to different things. And things are so much more expensive today than they were in the past. Um, some of the costs of our senior trips and mm -hmm. are just outrageous. Mm -hmm. um, but they're great opportunities for our kids. And like Julie said, uh, allowing every kid to participate <coughs> really important. is important. And I think the overnight piece for some students, because what we, when we ask families, there are a number of students who have not spent a night away from home by fifth, the end of fifth grade into sixth grade. So that's a daunting concept for some families. And so we see that group that stays behind. Many of them are those students that just haven't, haven't gotten there yet. So if we can start with baby steps and grow to a point where we might, you know, one of the suggestions I've made in, is that we actually do a camp out here at school, you know, in the spring, where we have kids and teachers and families be a part of that type of experience here. That might be the first time for some kids that they have done that. And it's still in the comfort of their family. And mm. 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 Awesome. Any other questions? So, Madam Chair, my final statement would be that I think it was important to have Chris come tonight, Mr. Paul come tonight, just so the committee's informed, because I know that there's nostalgia and there's memories around Camp Borndale, and it's not that we're not going back to Camp Borndale because it was bad. It's because our kids might benefit more from something different. And I think that's how uh, it needs to be uh, communicated to the community. So I know that you're going to put some uh, communication out there to, to parents. And my certainly our, our hope is that when he comes back next fall, we'll have some of the kids come in after the trip and kind of report back and give you an inside look as to how Nature's Classroom really worked out for them, the benefits. And we can kind of see the difference with Borndale. So. And if I could, not, I'd, I'd also like to point out that we do have businesses in town that will um, grant scholarships to students mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. families may not be able to afford to do some of these things. Yep. So I would encourage the parents to reach out if you do want to send your child and it's, it's available. Um, so please feel free to reach out. Um, I have, I pulled it up. It looks amazing. It looks great. It looks like a great experience for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. There, and again, there's n multiple sites. Mm -hmm. And if the transportation costs level down, we can give, offer different settings for kids over the mm -hmm. years. So that's. Because it will calm down eventually. <laughs> like your optimism. Very optimistic. Class <laughs> is half full. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pollock. This was great to hear about. Have a good night. Thank you. Night. <clears throat> Item number five is correspondence. Dr. Flanagan. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I hope you all received uh, the survey request, uh, the survey link that went out regarding our strategy for district improvement. I mailed that out last Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I want to say. We did a reminder on Monday. Um, as you recall, we are soliciting input from all community stakeholders regarding uh, the reformation of our strategy for district improvement. Last year, we had put the survey out, or sorry, three years ago, we put the survey out just before COVID hit. And we had 128 responses. I'm proud to say that right now we're over 185 responses. We'll put out another reminder on Thursday morning saying it's going to close at the end of the day. Um, but we're getting some good information from parents and stakeholders regarding uh, what the next evolution of the SDI will look like. Great. Thank you. Uh, for personnel, we have a notification <clears throat> of two new hires. We have Cole Tucker, which is a TES second shift custodian, and Robert Morrill, uh, TMS second shift custodian. We also have a notification of resignation from Sarah Martin, which is a theater teacher. Good luck, Ms. Martin. Uh, share the success, Grace. 
Um, TES thanks the PTO for hosting Mingo last week and looks forward to many more end of the year events, including the Science Expo, the Art Show, and the first annual pasta dinner. After April vacation, the Scholastic Book Fair is going to return to TES. Ms. LaRochelle and Ms. Souza have been coordinating volunteers and planning for the event. And last week was also the National Paraprofessional Appreciation Day, so TES wanted to give a shout out to all their paraprofessionals. The middle school is entering vacation with MCAS, a trip to Washington, D.C., and the staycation for the 8th graders here. Their clubs are in full gear with student council doing a cleanup after vacation. At THS, 30 students and staff are leaving tomorrow for a trip to Austria, Switzerland, and Germany. The class of 2022 met this morning about end-of-the-year events, including senior week, prom, and graduation. 22 members of the class of 2022 will be acknowledged and recognized on May 12th at the Academic Excellence Ceremony. And congratulations to our students of the month, Emma Angelo, Max Gregoire, Jane Kelly and Mira Patel, and all the schools wish families a safe and happy April break. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, can I jump in? Um, I, I think Grace missed something there. Um, I, I visited the school last week, and was fortunate enough to be with Grace in the hall when she gave Dr. Flanagan some news. Grace? Um. I'm, I'm going to go to Harvard. But <laughs> oh, congratulations. <laughs> I think that's a big deal. <laughs> That's congratulations. great. Certainly exciting news. Yeah. Uh, congratulations. Kind of on cloud nine when we saw her in the hall. You know, <laughs> yeah. that was I think, it was, I think it was still surreal at that point. But uh, I found out like that night, and then I came in that morning. It was like the whole school. That's great. <laughs> Quite an accomplishment, Grace. Wow, so that's wonderful, you. Grace. Thank you. That was a great interruption. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she earned it. She, yeah, yeah. That, that was great. It's our second student in three years, I believe. Second in four years. Four years. Four years. Four years. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. good job. Thank you. For a subcommittee update, Jeff, did you have any update? Yes, so uh, in a policy subcommittee, we've reviewed and approved the first read, sections J, K, and L, um, to be brought to the full committee. Um, you should have all of these sections in your drive at this point. Um, they are very, very heavy, particularly Section J. So if we can just make a point um, to go through very carefully, these are the last three sections to go through and have um, feedback back to Dr. Flanagan by April 21st, which is next Thursday. Um, so we can come back um, the following school committee and be able to wrap those up. And then from a superintendent evaluation okay. standpoint, um, the evaluation has gone out and has come back. We will meet an executive session tonight um, to discuss the results of the superintendent evaluation. Uh, moving on to unfinished business. Uh, actually, were there any other policy subcommittee updates? Was there a capital asset at all? Yes, capital asset. Um, we had our final meeting last week. Um, the one that really affects the school would be the playground for the elementary school. The capital asset committee voted 500 to fund the elementary school playground through ARPA funds. Oh, that's wonderful. So our recommendation now goes to the complete board of selectmen, and then they have the final vote on that, which hopefully will take place next week. Great. Um, so that's good for our elementary school students, parents, teachers. They need to be outside. And is that the entire playground? That's or? the entire, both playgrounds, both, both upper and lower, yes. And will that be done this summer? That would be up to Dr. Flanagan. So <laughs> <laughs> give, give us supply chain issues. Mr. Messina has a meeting there actually tomorrow. So we're, we're actually um, meeting with uh, Colin Loisel, who is the town's chief procurement officer at the elementary school tomorrow, just so he can draft up the bid package. Um, we hope to get the bid package out as quickly as possible. Um, Dr. Flanagan mentioned supply chain issues. Uh, probably unlikely that it would get delivered in, during the summer, but um, certainly hoping that you know by mid mid October that it would be uh, installed. But um, as we go through the process, I'll update the committee on a regular basis as to the status. Great. But that was a five zero zero supported by the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen, so I'd like to thank them for their support as well for um, always being there for us. Yeah, so. that's great. I'll echo the same appreciation. <clears throat> Are there any other subcommittees that we need an update on? No. I don't think I know people okay. We're going to talk about the School <laughs> Building Committee here in a minute. Yeah. 
Yeah, All right. So. Um, so we can move on to unfinished business, uh, the middle school building project. Dr. Flanagan. Great. Thank you. So we'll jump right into the first uh, slide here. Uh, as you know, uh, Mr. Pollitt hosted two community tours at the middle school on March 30th and April 2nd. Uh, we had about 15 to 20 parents show up on March 30th and about 25 to 30 parents show up or families show up on Saturday, April 2nd. Uh, the feedback was very positive. Um, we felt that the, the turnout actually for the tours was better than we've received for the community forums. As such, we've scheduled two more tours uh, of the middle school, one on Wednesday, April 27th, and one on Saturday, April 30th. Um, again, those are just drop-in tours. Anyone who wants to come in can kind of pop in, get a sense of what the school looks like, understand uh, some of the, the physical challenges that we face there. Additionally, the night of town meeting on May 3rd, We'll have the school open at 5 o'clock for anyone who wants to come up early and really walk the school and see what it looks like prior to coming over to the high school here for a town meeting on May 3rd. Uh, and the last thing, as you know, May 3rd town meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, we need a two-thirds majority vote to get the MSBA project ballot question placed uh, for May 17th. And on May 17th, we need a simple majority. I believe the only other bullet here I missed was the, uh, we had Left Field and JCJ come, as well as a lot of members of the school building committee and present before the finance committee uh, last April 6th. So the outreach has been strong. We've been in front of the board of selectmen, in front of the finance committee, in front of community members. Um, I know that uh, Jackie Richardson has reached out to uh, Council on Aging. So anything we need to do to get out there, we're willing to do it. I think the videos have been helped. I think social media has helped. Um, and, and we're trying to get the message out there uh, so people are informed uh, about what we, what we are up against in the history of the project. Uh, I know that everyone received the mailer last week. We have another one of these that is coming out the week of April 25th, so one week before the, the vote itself. As a gentle reminder that it's important to get out on May 3rd, May 17th to vote. So, so that's where we are in terms of the project. We'll go to the next slide. Just a couple couple questions are out there. So so there there are some questions out there, and people are asking, you know, what can we do to reduce the scope of the project at this point prior to the vote? Um, this is actually an email I received because we know that that happened with the elementary school. Uh, the answer is there's nothing we can do at this point. The answer is the elementary school was built in the early 2000s under the SBA, which was a school building assistance program. That program no longer exists. That evolved into the MSBA. And when the MSBA came around in 2005, everything became far more standardized. So we were tasked with developing a school that meets our educational program. We had to submit a 40-page document to both the MSBA and DESE for approval of what our educational program is. And we had to design a school that met that educational program. That's what we've done. That's where we are. We can't pick and choose and say, you know what, we don't want a black box in it anymore. Uh, we want the gym to be smaller. We want to cut off science labs. We can't do that. And it's also important to go back to the question I answered last time was, we're designing a school as fiscally responsible as possible for 480 students. The number 480 was dictated to us by the MSBA. That is not a number that we on our own gained. That was a, a longitudinal study that delivered that number to us. So at this point, um, the hay is in the barn. We've had over 55 public meetings. We've had several community forums. We've had several opportunities along the way for people to have input. Um, the school that we're going to vote on is the only school option at this point. So we can't do anything uh, to reduce it before the vote. That's a long winded answer to that question. And if I, if I could, sure. real quick, Dr. Flanagan, is it, when we're talking about the population, 480 students, when we only have 380 today. Correct. Is this is a 50-year building. So we're not building a school for today's population. Right. We're building a school for 10 years, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years down Correct. the line. So the population in Tingsboro is going to change. Um, the older residents, um, I won't mention you by name, Dr. Flanagan, um, <laughs> will move on and the younger kids will come in. So when we're looking at this project, it's important to know that we're looking at 30 years, not three. Correct. So. Correct. Yeah. Also, um, I've found in my experiences that a new school draws people to your town. So people may be more inclined to move here knowing that they're going to have such an, a good educational experience at a brand new middle school. 100% agree. You can see a growth in population just because of that. 
Yeah, absolutely agree. Absolutely agree with both those statements. And and, and the, the statement I say, the analogy I say is, you know, I, I live on Montana Drive. There are eight houses, and we had 17 kids go through the school. Well, in 20 years, none of us may be living on that street, but those houses will still be there, and they'll still be three-bedroom houses, and those kids will still be coming to the school. So we are thinking long-term here. Um, so, so that's who we are. So the project is the project at this point, and really it's not open for modification. Next question is how will the town offset the cost of the project and its operating budget? Uh, I think we've done a nice job of answering that on the mailer, but essentially there, is, there are several new projects in town that are going to bring in new revenue, new growth to the community. And essentially, I think that the simplest way to explain this is the Toll Brother project that's going to be built on the Tingsboro Country Club. That's going to bring in about a million dollars a year in, in property taxes. That's new revenue to the town. That money will be used to offset any debt incurred by a middle school vote. So it's going to be, money is going to be dedicated from the operating budget to lower the burden on the taxpayer. So the question is, what is the burden on the taxpayer? For the average home in Tingsboro, which is $455,000, you're talking about $415 a year. So that's the tax impact to the residents. It's about a 6.1%, 6.2% increase on your taxes over the longevity of the loan. Um, but it's going to get a new facility for our community. You know, and there's a, there's a, a saying that, that's out there that communities are, are judged by the schools that they keep. Uh, we have two outstanding facilities. We deserve a third outstanding facility. Uh, this community deserves it. Our kids deserve it. So, um, so those are the questions that I wanted to I highlight today. That. Absolutely. Um, so for the community and for anybody that was unable to attend, we did have a tri-board meeting uh, a few weeks back, and it was overwhelmingly supported by um, unanimous by the Board of Selectmen, unanimous by the school committee, um, and all except for one member of the finance committee supported um, the town allocating part of its operating budget for this um, school project so it's you know overwhelmingly we have significant support for this project um, the leadership in town sees the need for this project and uh, these are the officials that we've all voted in so um, you know feel free to ask them any questions as well uh, I say this really to the community members um, ask ask your officials that you have voted in any questions about this project if you have questions so that's all I have for information about the MSBA and the FAQs. We'll have some more questions that are, are, are topical and thematic uh, for our April 26th meeting. And, um, you know, if there's anything that any, anyone in the community would like to know, please reach out. Uh, I, I actually appreciate that, that community members whom I don't know are reaching out via email asking questions about the project. I think that's great. I think people are interested and, and really want to know. So um, I keep pointing them to the website and, and doing the best I can to fill those questions. And if I may, Madam Chair, I, I always go back to social media doesn't always know everything so please don't if you have questions or you question something that you read on social media reach out to any of us I'm a co-chair on the committee with Hillary Winstrom of the Board of Selectmen um, any member here could answer your questions so please don't believe everything you read on social media or Kingsboro parents page please ask the questions directly to somebody who's involved in the project and who has spent hours and hours and hours doing this thank you that's all i have for 9a great thank you so 9b is the first read of sections j k and l of the msba um, model policy jeff before we go there did you have anything else that you wanted to add i know you kind of gave an update during the policy subcommittee no okay great so i'll seek a motion to approve as a first read sections j k and l of the model masc policy manual I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Is there any discussion? One point of clarification, Madam Chair. It's April 21st, not April 19th. That was a placeholder I put in there. Okay. So committee will get comments to me by April 21st, please. Okay. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 600. Great. Thank you. Uh, moving on to 10A, which we already covered with uh, Mr. Mr. Pollitt a few moments ago. Uh, 10B, the school choice participation. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So each year the school committee um, takes a vote on whether or not <clears throat> the district would like to participate in the school choice, uh, Massachusetts school choice uh, program. There's backup information in your drive as well as this synopsis right here. You can see currently that we have 50 students uh, that are part of our school choice program. Um, and what we are recommending next year <clears throat> is to open up the following seats. Zero seats in grades K through six, 
eight seats in grade seven, four seats in grade eight, five seats in grade nine, 10 in grade 10, 10 in grade 11, and five seats in grade 12. Typically, we don't get a lot of uh, school choice options, grade 11 and 12, uh, 10 some, nine is when we start to see some, and six, seven, eight is when we start to see kids come in a little bit. Um, but we do have space available. It brings $5,000 in for each student that comes to the district, and it's an opportunity for, uh, for kids to, to come be a part of Tingsboro Public Schools. It's been a successful program for us in the past, and I would encourage the, the committee to, uh, to support this again uh, at those uh, identified seat uh, numbers. Thank you, Dr. Plan, again. So if, I'll, if I may? Sure. When those children become part of our school, they're, they're in for through the end of 12th grade? Correct. So they graduate? Correct. That's it. Thank you. I'll seek a motion to approve the participation in the Massachusetts School Choice Program for the 2022-2023 school year um, with the mentioned seats as Dr. Flanagan had presented. I'll make that motion. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 6 zero, 0 And the Lakeview Window Replacement Phase 2. Mr. Messina. Thank you, Dr. Flanagan. So um, just some of the bullet points in terms of where we are with the project. We have been working with a firm uh, called PRA Architects, as well as Colin Loisel, who is the town's chief procurement officer. And the bids were issued on March 4th last month. Um, on March 11th, we hosted a pre-bid walkthrough at the Lakeview School. Um, we did not have any general contractors attend that, but um, we were confident that we would get some bids. And on March 23rd, we received two bids, L&L Contracting for $447,300 <coughs> and Lazat Glass for $461,423. Um, I would point out that l, &L Contracting was the general contractor for phase one of the window project, and we were very pleased with them uh, and, and their work. Um, so it was very encouraging to see that they were the low bidder. And at this point, I would recommend to the committee uh, to award the bid to l, &L Contracting and to authorize your chair to sign any and all agreements. Can I just add two points to Mr. Messina's presentation? One, that money does not come from the Tingsboro taxpayers. And two, this project is scheduled to be completed, hopefully this summer, so that we can open uh, in August and have the windows complete. And this means there's no more phases of windows. Correct. We're done. Are there any other phases of renovations on that school? None planned at this time. That would be $3.2 million of improvements to the Lakeview facility at no cost to Tingsboro taxpayers. Wonderful. So I will seek a motion to award the project to l, &L Contracting, Inc. for the bid total of 447300 and authorize the chair to sign the contract. Make that motion. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 6 zero, zero. And uh, moving on to the affirmation of the warrant article for the special town meeting. So, Mr. Messina. Mr. Messina. Thank you, Madam Chair. So um, these are two warrant articles that I uh, would recommend the school committee support when brought to the voters at special town meeting. And special town meeting um, affects this fiscal year, fiscal year 22, as opposed to the annual town meeting where all the F FY23 business is taken care of. So in terms of the host community agreement funding, um, members may recall that during uh, a tri-board session last year and discussion of some of the revenues in town, um, all three boards supported uh, allocating $65,000 of funding from the host community agreement to the Tingsboro School Committee for um, offset of some health department staffing as well as some health curriculum. Uh, it was fully supported, but when annual town meeting was held the mechanisms really weren't discussed as to how that funding was going to get into your budget so in discussion with um, Matt Hansen our town administrator the the mechanism is to take it out of the general fund revenue of the town and place it into this year's school committee budget 
So that, that is the warrant article that Matt has placed um, on the draft warrant, and um, that, is, that is what I would seek the affirmation of the school committee to this uh, warrant article. I don't know if you would like to do the second one and, and vote on them together or separately? Let's vote on them together. Okay. Yeah. Unless in discussion anybody wants it broken out. Okay, so the second warrant article is the annual housekeeping article, and this is to um, add the Medicaid funding that we received last fiscal year into this fiscal year's budget. And the reason we're all, always one year behind is the free cash needs to be certified by, um, by the auditors of the town before that we can make it available to us. So this housekeeping will add $121,379 to the school committee budget um, for fiscal year 22. So I'll seek a motion to affirm the special town meeting warrant articles as presented by Mr. Messina. I'll make that motion. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 6 zero, zero. Thank you. Mr. Messina again. Finance. On a roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, can I, I'm sorry. Can we go to one more slide before we jump into finance? I apologize for that. This, I generally do the upcoming school committee meetings. I do have one uh, question that came up today, and I was hoping the committee could uh, support this. Uh, on May 24th, we have our Senior Awards Night, or Celebration of Excellence for Seniors. Uh, it's 7 o'clock here at the high school. I was wondering if we could move the meeting at 6 o'clock, and then obviously the committee would be invited to go uh, see the Celebration of Excellence that evening. Is that a problem for anyone to go 6 o'clock that night? Do we need maybe, to vote? Maybe. <laughs> no. We do because we changed the calendar. Yeah, okay. So I'll seek a motion to move the May 24th regular scheduled school committee meeting from 7 p.m. to 6 p.m. here at the high school. I'll make that motion. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 6 0 0. Thank, Thank you, you for your flexibility. Can you just send out a reminder? <laughs> Prior to that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping to go to that. I'm hoping Sam will be at that. All right, Mr. Messina, finance. Thank you, Madam Chair. So for signing of bills tonight, um, nine warrants were presented to the committee. I do have them all back approved. Um, in your drive, as always, are the warrant numbers, accounts, and amounts. Also, at the tribal board meeting on uh, March 28th, we uh, brought seven bill warrants to the committee that night. Uh, those were signed that night, and warrant numbers, accounts, and amounts are in your drive. And for signing of payroll, since we last went through our payroll dates, um, we have three in your drive, the payrolls of March 14th, March 28th, and April 11th, with the warrant numbers and amounts. And that is it for finance. We can move on to school committee discussion. Grace? Um, nothing at this time. Thank you. Justine? Nothing at this time. I'm all set. Thank you. I'm all set. All set. Thank you. I want to thank Mr. Paula for coming tonight. I think it was a great presentation. Um, I appreciate his vision and looking forward and continuously improving the programming. Um, I like that it aligns with Dr. Flanagan's vision of having the through line through all our education, um, through all grade levels. Um, I think that continuity will benefit our students. And again, I want to congratulate Grace. I think that's a huge accomplishment that can't be overstated. So good job. Thank and you. I wish you luck. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to, again, congratulate Grace. Um, thank you to Mr. Messina for all his work on the budget. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into that year over year, and, and you always do a great job. So thank you for, for that. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank all the elected officials in town. Um, this is a very busy time of year between capital assets, budgets, now we have the school building, um, just the town meetings, tri board meetings. Uh, a lot of time goes into these meetings um, and everybody's a volunteer. We're elected, but we're volunteers. Um, so thank you to the finance committee, the board of selectmen, the members of this committee, um, and the rest of them. The one. The school building committee um, and there's several of us on several of those committees so it's, it's several nights a week 
Um, but just thank you for volunteering your time, for being willing to run, and uh, it doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you. Mr. Messina? I'm all set tonight. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple things. Awesome. Congratulations. So good. Um, and Mr. Tenorello, you made a great point about Mr. Messina stepping up with the budget. Mr. Messina also stepped up with capital asset this year as well. Yes, and as I was seeing this Lakeview's project as well. So he certainly put his time in. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Joe. Um, hope our kids are having a great time in D.C. right now. Hope uh, everything's going well there. And I'm hopeful that tomorrow's trip to Austria and Switzerland and Germany goes very well for our high school students. I hope they have a time of their life and have some great memories and uh, really enjoy the experience. So I'm, I'm pleased that we can do these things again. I'm pleased that we're talking about proms and celebrations and graduations and moving on. Uh, I couldn't, couldn't be happier. This is a great time of the year that we have coming up and it's just really exciting to be a part of the schools. Um, Tony, you kind of took the words out of my mouth. Um, I was going to say the same thing, you know, thanks great to all of our elected line. officials. Um, you know, a, a well-respected person once told me that um, it's just two nights a week, uh, two nights a month that you're here, um, but it's not just two nights a month. There's a, there's a lot of involvement, and so um, thanks to everybody um, that's elected, that's supporting um, all the great programs that are going on in town. And with that, we do have a need for executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contact contract negotiations with non-union personnel. We will return from executive session only to adjourn the regular session meeting, and this action requires a roll call vote. Need a motion. Right. So I'll seek that motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Justine? Aye. I'm in favor? In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. Right. We are in executive session. Thank you. Have a great night.